Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to Characters Explained, and oh boy, we've got a special one today. We have covered 26 characters and upgrades in this series, but that's not all that BFN has to offer. There's just one other character in the roster that offers a very unique experience. A character that I was genuinely worried about discussing because I don't want to do them any injustice, and his name is 80s Action Hero. So, without any further ado, let's get right into it. So, let's start off with the basics of this character. Aedes has 150 HP, which is fair, and his primary, the Bow Blaster, is a charge weapon. Basically, at each charge level, it deals different damage. So, starting at no charge, the damage is split up into 5 dots on your crosshair, with the sides in the middle dealing different damage. The sides deal 1 to 2 damage depending on if you get a crit or not, and the middle deals 17 to 20, which also depends on a crit. The first charge shrinks the dots on your crosshair to 3, and the sides here now deal 4 to 5 damage, with the middle dealing 32 to 38. Finally, the second charge removes all other dots on your crosshair but the middle one, as it combines all of them. Here, here, the blast deals 65 to 75 damage, with 15 being the splash damage here. One more thing I have to mention before we move on is that the side parts of your crosshair can connect to the same enemy, so you could deal quite a bit of extra damage up close to big targets like Oaks. Now, his primary isn't the only thing we'll be discussing here before getting to his abilities. Aedes also happens to have a gimmick built around his primary, and it's called tagging. Basically, when you hit an enemy, you will get a tag on them. These tags can range from 1 to 3, and they basically give you an idea of where an enemy is at until the tags are gone. But the only way to remove tags is by either getting healed as a plant, or by dying as Aedes. And that's it. Otherwise, if an Aedes tags you, you're forced to get some healing or die trying. It's interesting, and this gimmick also ties directly into an ability that we'll get to soon enough. Overall, Aedes' basic stats are really interesting, and they make him one of the most complex characters in the game by default. But when you combine that with his abilities, oh boy. This is where things get real. Starting off here, we have Dynamite Dodge. This ability lunges Aedes in whatever direction he uses the ability in, and when he does lunge himself, he leaves behind an explosive device that deals 70 base damage or 15 splash to whatever enemies are near it. Now, this ability may seem simple, and honestly, it kind of is, but taking a look at what else it's capable of will really change your view on it. This can be used as a mobility option, as an example. It's pretty good for getting just a few extra bunny hops in before taking out an opponent. It also allows you to escape the next ability we're covering, which is also super helpful, as that one has to finish its animation before being dismounted otherwise. Overall, this ability might be simple, but it's still pretty good. Next up, we have the previously mentioned mounted ability, that being Rocket Ride. When activated, Aedes will launch himself in the air with a massive mountable rocket launcher underneath him. This rocket launcher deals between 12 to 20 damage, and it's active for a few seconds. This ability is really good for taking out tanky opponents like fully stacked oaks, and it's a great counterplay to some of the hardest plants to fight. That being said, it does still have some flaws. The biggest one here is that you are incredibly vulnerable when you use this ability, and it's especially noticeable when you can't use Dynamite Dodge to cancel it early. You will just get lasered by good players here. But overall, that doesn't really break the deal, and I still think this ability is good regardless. Finally, we have Camp Missile, and this is the ability that uses the tagging gimmick that I mentioned earlier. When activated, Aedes pulls out a massive set of rockets that targets enemies that are in front of him. Now, with no tagged targets, this thing is pretty weak and pretty stupid too. It deals at most 40 damage to whatever you're looking at, unless you are right in an enemy's face. In that case, 25 damage per rocket for some reason. But realistically, getting that close is a death wish, so what makes this ability good? Well, the more tags you have on an enemy, the more consistent the rockets become. 1 and 2 tags make the homing better, and 3 tags boost the damage for every rocket fired to 25 by default. On top of that, you can hit multiple targets with this ability if you've tagged multiple enemies too. What this means is that you can hit 5 plants in front of you if all 5 of them have at least 2 tags. This ability can be catastrophic if used right, and I'd say it's very underutilized by 80s players in general. So that's 80s basic kit. He overall has a lot of potential with this kit alone, but when we get into his upgrades next, you better believe that things are about to get even crazier. Now, up to this point, Aedes might seem like a deceptively gimmicky character. Like, the tag gimmick is cool, but surely Aedes doesn't get upgrades that significantly improve it, as well as upgrades that improve his versatility massively, right? 
Well, I brought it up, so you already know the answer. Of course he got some of the most useful upgrades in the game. Why wouldn't he? So let's get into them. We'll start with his base upgrades, and up first is targeting arrows. This upgrade simply allows you to keep your tags on enemies even after you die. There's not much more to this one, but considering how it only costs one point, I'd actually say this is pretty good. There's not many one-pointers in this game that are genuinely solid, so it's a nice change of pace to see 80s with this one. Next up, we have Critical Tag and the Huntsman, which are both upgrades that do similar things to the tags you get. Critical Tag is the simpler of the two, as it guarantees three tags on the enemy if you land a crit with your primary. And before you ask with this one, yes, spamming no charge on the bow can count for this criteria. Huntsman follows a similar path, but with this one, you get three tags for simply landing a fully charged shot near or on an enemy. So this one is more practical for long-range combat, at least if you ask me. Honestly, as somebody who used to run both upgrades, I think they're both good in different situations. If you need to spam, Critical Tag is better, but if you can hang back from your enemies and sneak some full charges in, then Huntsman is the better pick. It all depends on how you play your cards with these upgrades, so I'd recommend giving them a shot. Finally, for your base upgrades, we have what could truthfully be considered the best upgrade in the entire game, and that is Bowmaster. When equipped, this upgrade reduces the charge time of your primary by 75% for around 3 seconds every time you get an elimination. And this elimination can work on basically anything in multiplayer, pots included. So, this upgrade is broken. It is unironically so good. It genuinely casts a shadow over almost every other upgrade for this character. But with that being said, it's boring to discuss meta upgrades, so we're gonna move on from here. Though seriously, if you take away even just one thing from this video, it's that Bowmaster is 80's best upgrade and you should be running it. You are actively harming yourself if you're not. Alright, next up we have his ability upgrades, and we'll start with Dynamite Dodge. Starting off here is Leg Day, which basically makes the mobility of this ability way better. It just lets you go further than you could before, and for that reason, I think it's really good. I run this on almost every 80s build I have, because it's genuinely really good for getting in or out of fights. Highly recommend this one, it's worth using. As for Trackstar, the other upgrade, it's a bit harder to say. This one basically guarantees tags on enemies that are near or get hit by Dynamite Dodge. It's pretty interesting, but really, it's not worth running unless you use Camp Missile a ton. Up next, we have the Rocket Ride upgrades, and these ones are quite interesting. First up is Remarkable Rockets, which gives you tags on enemies with your rockets. Here, each rocket gives two tags, so do the math and you'll realize that the tags you get are kind of nuts, especially on large groups of enemies. This one can be very useful, and I could say the same about Free Ride, the other upgrade here. Free Ride increases Rocket Ride's duration by 3 seconds for every elimination you get with it. To understand how insane that is, look no further than Combat Adrenaline for Pea Shooter. That upgrade resets Pea Soup's timer every time Pea Shooter does damage, and that is genuinely a really good upgrade. Now, Free Ride isn't anywhere near that level of good. It also puts you in a bad position for getting shot at if you're on it for too long, so its usage really boils down to ops or a bumming team. But despite those drawbacks, I'd say it's still pretty good. Finally, we have the Can't Missile upgrades. Up first is Improved Tracking, which does a couple of interesting things. First of all, it improves the tracking of this ability, and it can actually target enemies that don't have tags much better. Interestingly enough, if you happen to hit an enemy with no tags, not only will they get three tags instantly, but the cooldown of Camp Missile also reduces by quite a lot. This allows you to kill an enemy with no tags in mere seconds. Now, this cooldown doesn't apply to enemies with tags already, but regardless, this is a really interesting upgrade. The other upgrade here is Super Payload, which doubles the rockets in Camp Missile. It may seem like a small change, but the total amount of damage that you're capable of doing passes some insane damage thresholds. Before, you couldn't one-shot a fully tagged Citron. Now you can. It's honestly quite useful, though for being a 4-point upgrade, I'd be lying if I said that I would use this over Bowmaster. It's simply just not as good. Still though, it's really neat. So, that was all of AD's upgrades. He is a very rare case in BFN, where almost every upgrade here is great in some capacity. And knowing what we now know about him, let's move on to some example builds I've made for the character. First up is my personal build, using Bowmaster, Leg Day, and Targeting Arrows. 
Bowmaster makes you a DPS nightmare, Leg Day gets you in and out of conflicts, and targeting arrows is just here for fun. Overall, I'd say it's a solid build. Next up is a tag build, using improved tracking, critical tag, and targeting arrows. There's not much I need to explain here, this build just specializes in tags. Finally, we have a Rodeo Forever build, using free ride and critical blow. For those of you who want to be on a rocket forever, I get it, and I present to you a build that does just that. Mostly. So, that is basically everything I could cover about 80s in a video of this style. So, with that being said, what are my final thoughts on this character? Well, I think he is easily one of the best characters in the game. Everything about his kit makes it seem like he's a simple pick character, but he's really not. When used right, he is the judge, jury, and executioner on the battlefield. And that's without even getting into his potential with upgrades too. So, with that conclusion, I'm going to end this video here. Kind of. Let's talk for a little bit. So, thank you to everybody who supported me and my videos in this series. Your support means the world to me, and I really appreciate everything that you guys have done for me. Now, with that being said, we still have just a little bit more to do here before we really wrap a bow on this series. One thing I want to get around to is remaking most of my older videos at this point. I've looked back on all of them recently, and they are simply not that good. Now, I'm a bit conflicted on where I want the cutoff point to be, but as for right now, just know that the first five characters I covered are all planned to get a remake video in the future. I also have plans for a tier list on this game, and for those of you who watched my old tier lists on TikTok, just know that I'm actually going to put some serious effort into my thoughts. That's why I've decided to hit max rank in BFM before even attempting a tier list. Yes, I'm actually doing it. I'm currently rank 1700 something, and I've been making some crazy progress these past couple of months. So this tier list video may come out around August to September, give or take. So that's basically all of the remaining plans for this series. It's been a heck of a ride, hasn't it? It may not be the most popular thing I post or anything like that, but I really do enjoy making these videos, and I like seeing how you guys react to them as well. All right, that's enough about that, let's move on. Getting back to the video topic, I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts on 80s in the comments down below. I'm curious to hear what you think about this character. And if you're new around here, and you like what you see, then maybe consider subscribing. It helps me out a ton, and believe me, BFN is nowhere near being over on my channel. Just trust me on that one. As for me, I'm gonna go ahead and get my final account to GM5 with 80s. So I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.